So to figure out if your soils are sufficient for a rain garden, meaning if the water will move down through that soil at a quick enough rate, we need to dig a, a shallow hole about six to eight inches deep and we're going to fill it up with water and see if it drains out in a reasonable amount of time. So we're going to do this spot right here and see what it looks like. So it's a simple infiltration test, which is what we're doing. We're going to fill this hole up with water and just let it drain out and see how long it takes. So we filled our hole up with water and we're going to let it drain out fully now. So if it takes between one to six hours to drain out, this is an excellent spot for a rain garden. It means the soils are, are pretty loose and friable and they, they have a good drainage ability. Um, if, we, if it takes somewhere between six to 18 hours, it's probably okay to put the garden here, but we may want to add some amendments when we get the garden dug out. If it takes more than about 24 hours to drain out, you really should find a different spot for a rain garden. That means that the soils have a lot of clay content or there might be a water table very close to the surface. So that's not a spot you want to put a rain garden. So what we can see here, in the time that I've been talking, we can see this, this soil or this water has drained down about an inch already in this hole. So I, I, I have a pretty good idea that these soils are very suitable for the garden here. Another way to take a look at this, you can take some of the soil in your hand and wet it a little bit and see if it holds together. Form a little ball. See if it's difficult to form a ball like this with the soil when it's slightly wet, you know it's pretty sandy and that's exactly what we have here. I have the advantage of knowing at this particular site that we have loamy sands. So we can see that this is a very loose and friable soil and is excellent for the rain garden. If it has uh, a ball that is that molds slightly in your hand, that's still okay. If it has a, a very clayey feeling ball and you can press it flat and make it into a ribbon in your hand that stretches out, that probably has a lot of clay and that's may, that may be a difficult site for the garden. It just means you may need to make it a little bit bigger to give that water a chance to sink in. So it's been 12 minutes and our hole is dry. So that tells us that we have very well draining soil here and it would be a suitable site for the rain garden. So we've shown you a basic infiltration test that you can use to check your, the suitability of your soils for a rain garden. What we'd like to demonstrate now for you is a better method that gives you a little more detailed look at what your underlying soils are like and how suitable it might be for a rain garden. So what we would like you to do here is dig a hole about 12 inches deep. So we're going a little bit deeper now, making sure we're getting into the soils that are at the bottom of where the rain garden would be, where the water is really going to be sinking down. And we're going to fill that hole up with water and let it drain out. So what we're going to do after this point is refill the hole and start taking measurements. We'll show that to you in just a second. But the purpose of doing this first fill and then the drain out will allow those soils to pull the water out so that the soils are wetted around that hole. That way it gives you a really good idea of what's going to be happening at the bottom of this hole. So we're going to demonstrate this test for you coming up. So we've let our hole drain down completely and now we've refilled it again with water to the top. What we're going to do now is take a measurement down from a point across the top of the hole. It's easiest to do this with a piece of wood or something, some other straight edge. And we're going to measure down from the a point on that straight edge to the water surface. So right now I've got about two and a half inches down to the surface of that water. So we're going to record the time when we've started this test in that first measurement down to the water and we're going to come back every half hour for a few measurements. We're going to do this for maybe two hours if it takes that long for this water to drain out. Well, we're, What the point of this is is to see what the change is in that depth down to the water surface for each of those points in time. So we're going to come back and show you how to do the calculation at the end. So uh, at this point we have two hours worth of measurements here at this particular hole. And so those values are listed in the table. What we can do next is subtract the value from the previous value in the table. So for example, our first reading was two and a half inches down from the straight edge. Our next reading at, at half an hour in was six and a half inches. So we subtract two and a half from six and a half and that gives us four inches of infiltration for that half hour period. That was extremely fast and that, that's, you'll likely see that for your early measurements in the hole because some of that water is being pulled by the outer layers. Even though we soak pre-soak this hole there is still some capillary action pulling that water out. What we're looking for are the measurements that are further down. So the later measurements had all stabilized around one inch of change for each half hour period. So what that amounts to in an infiltration rate then is two inches per hour. So we double that because it was only a half an hour time step. 
So we have an infiltration rate here about two inches per hour. So in general, a rule of thumb that you can use when evaluating your site, if your infiltration rate is less than a half, about a half an inch per hour, those are pretty tight soils and you may want to reconsider putting your rain garden there. Uh, it can be done if you do some serious excavation, removing that existing soil, perhaps putting in an under drain, and then adding some soil amendments and putting a special soil mix in there. But that's more than most people want to do for a residential garden. If you're anywhere from a half an inch up to one to two inches per hour of infiltration, that those are very good soils for a rain garden. Again, the higher end of that range, one to two inches per hour is ideal, and you should be able to install that rain garden without any extra amendment. Higher infiltration rates will work fine. You just may want to be careful about plants drying out too quickly. So that's something to pay attention to as well. So we've demonstrated two infiltration tests that you can use at your site to determine the suitability of the soils for a rain garden. The first test was a simpler test where you simply just dig a hole, fill it up with water and let it drain out. And you can check back in several hours to see if that water is infiltrated into the ground. And the rule of thumb was if the water is still there after 24 hours, it's probably not a good spot for a rain garden. The second test gives you a little bit more information. First of all, you, we're digging down into the deeper layer of soil, so we're going down 8 to 10 inches at least. So it's giving you a better indication of what those soils are going to be like down low, where the water is really going to be infiltrating. And it allows you to put a number and quantify that infiltration rate into the soil. So that will give you, it'll make it easier for you to determine if your soils are suitable, if you're going to need some amendments, uh, or what might need to be done at your particular site. So these are the recommendations that we have. Again, we lean more towards the, the more detailed infiltration tests that we showed you, but uh, either one would probably work okay for you.